It's time now for our press review. For today's press review, we start by going back to our top story, the news that six people have feared dead after the collapse of that major bridge in Baltimore. I'm joined in the studio now by Leo McGuinn. Hi, Leo. Uh, Leo, what's the uh, reaction been worldwide to this uh, extraordinary disaster? Well, yeah, this bridge crash and collapse has been major news, not just in the US, but worldwide. It's made the front pages absolutely everywhere, whether it be Build in Germany, El País in Spain, or The Telegraph in the UK. It's dominated the front pages and, of course, in the US as well. This is the front page of the Washington Post this morning. You can see the striking image of the Dali crashing through the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I'll bring you pieces from the US's three biggest papers. We'll start with the Washington Post. Uh, they have this. The Mayday call from the ships stopped the Baltimore Bridge traffic and saved uh, lives. It, they saved countless lives in the process. That Mayday call just before the crash. The bridge carries 30,000 people a day, uh, cars a day even, and first responders managed to close it down to traffic just before the 95,000 ton ship ploughed through it, which limited the casualties. I'll switch to the New York Times. Engineers have raised questions about the bridge's integrity as the inquiry begins. Uh, they bring up questions raised by structural engineers who have questioned the bridge's construction. Several engineers who revealed, reviewed the footage say that the ship struck a pier and, according to some, Tuesday's tragedy could have been avoided if these piers had been better able to block such a collision. Some of the engineers questioned whether the bridge's piers had adequate blocking devices known as fenders. Others said that, actually, fenders or not, no bridge could have survived such an impact. But the investigation is, of course, still in the very early stages. I'll finish with the Wall Street Journal, unsurprisingly, uh, perhaps they focus on the economic aspect. Uh, all vessel traffic is currently suspended and port operations are expected to be affected for a long time. Baltimore is actually America's second largest hub for exporting coal to be sold abroad. And any disruptions could hit global coal markets especially hard, with 23 million metric tonnes of the commodity sent from Baltimore last year. A rebuilding is likely to be a long-term pro pro project similar to that in Genoa, Italy, when they had a similar bridge collapse in 2018. That took at least two years, so it's going to be a long-term process for rebuilding this bridge in Baltimore. Uh, well, let's cross uh, to France now for our next story. Uh, there's been uh, an investigation in newspaper Le Monde uh, into a major tyre manufacturer. Yeah, this is a fascinating long read in Le Monde this morning. A full part, a four-part series, which they call the Goodyear Affair, an investigation into how Goodyear, their American tyre manufacturer, managed a major crisis with their products suspected of being the cause of numerous accidents. For 10 years, Frenchwoman Sophie Rollet has waged war against Goodyear after her husband, a truck driver, was killed in an accident in 2014 after an, a tyre overheated, which caused him to go off the road. Uh, she never believed that story, and now she, her doubts are starting to be proved right. Years of internal emails and hidden strategies unveiled in what Le Monde call a global scandal of serious consequence. Goodyear is accused of failing to warn the public about manufacturing defects that they knew about and affected tens of thousand tyres that were manufactured in Luxembourg and have been implicated in a large number of accidents across several countries where people lost their lives. It's really interesting to read the details over several incidences and emails within Goodyear indicating that they were aware of the problems, but as to protect their image, they did not uh, ask for a recall. As I said, this is the first article in a four article series, so there's a lot more to come in this story. In the French uh, newspaper Le Monde. Um, to the UK now, uh, where several news uh, newspapers are reporting that. Uh, Confidence in the National Health Service uh, is at a record low. Yeah, this on the front page of The Times this morning, you can see here just one in four say the NHS is working. The Daily Mail also have a piece on it here. You can see public faith in the NHS plunges as waiting list surges. I'll go back to The Times this morning, uh, where they say satisfaction is at a record low. According to experts, the public feel like they're in a toxic relationship with the health service. Many support the institution on principle, but increasingly fed up. An annual report found that public confidence is at its lowest since polling began in 1983. The difficulty of seeing a GP was listed as the number one frustrating. Just 24% of people said they were satisfied 
with the NHS in 2023. That's down from 29% the year before and a peak of 70% in 2010. So it's fallen drastically in the last 14 years. The overwhelming majority say they still support the NHS on principle with nine in 10 saying it should be free and half of the people surveyed supported raising taxes and spending more on NHS. This of course comes with a general election in the next year. OK, we're going to uh, stay in the UK to finish, Leo, uh, where a much-loved uh, TV host uh, has found himself censored in North Korea in a rather amusing way. Yeah, well, it's made the front page of the Daily Start this morning. A fairly dramatic headline, Kim Jong-un's war on Alan Titchmarsh's imperialist trousers. That's a sentence <laughs> I didn't ever think I'd say, let alone on TV. It's actually in most of the UK papers uh, today. This is The Guardian, the story that Alan Titchmarsh's jeans uh, were censored on uh, North Korean broadcasts on take television, state television. That's because jeans are banned in North Korea. They're seen as a sign of imperialism. Mr Titchmarsh said that the news had given him a bit of street care. One thing that remains uncertain is how the programme was actually shown on a North Korean TV, Western programming, extremely rare on North Korean screens. So I don't think there's any chance of this press review being shown uh, anytime soon in North Korea. I would probably agree with you, uh, although I do think those trousers, uh, they've got something, something to them. I'll see <laughs> if I can find a pair somewhere, probably on North Korean state TV. Uh, Leo McGuinn with uh, today's International Press Review. Thank you very much.